our next guest on Living Proof is Sue, and Sue's here to talk about her story of why it's actually a miracle that she's even here. Sue, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Now, your story of how you were actually born is quite amazing. Can you tell us a little bit about your mum and why it's a miracle that you're actually here? My mother was pregnant at 40 um, and she, with her third set of twins it seemed, and her obstetrician in West Australia recommended that it was going to be a very bad choice to go ahead with the twin birth uh, and a twin pregnancy which he felt could even kill her, could wow. um, damage her mentally and physically more and let alone um, she'd had out of two sets of twins before she'd had three deaths um, and he felt this would be twins and uh, both deaf again so um, wow. yeah he felt it was too much to handle. You were the third lot of twins that That's she'd been right. pregnant with? Wow mm. what an incredible woman to carry all of those babies. That's right. So what happened that you're actually here so did she did mm. she go through the abortion? Yes yes well um, amazingly enough so she had the abortion she prayed about it she was seeing a Christian obstetrician, um, Dr. Love, I know his name, and um, she felt that she put it in God's hands with the doctor's advice, who was a Christian, and um, praying about it. She felt she would just go ahead and see what happened. Well, um, as it happened, uh, he definitely took fetal parts, he said, and um, sent her a bill for half the price <laughs> um, and uh, uh, she ended up uh, um, finding out she was still pregnant uh, afterwards so in spite of all of that so she uh, wow. sent the full price back to him and said this was God. My goodness so your sibling was unfortunately terminated and you managed to survive. Mm. What an incredible gift! Mm. Wow, so I bet your mum called you her miracle child. Frequently, yeah. <laughs> In public places, yeah. <laughs> introducing and um, sharing her testimony, which was God's overall yeah. of a hard situation. Wow, my goodness me. And as a child with your label now as the miracle child, I imagine that you would have had a lot of pressure growing up to have that label. Yeah. I didn't publicise it, but she did. So, um, but yeah, there were lots of other pressures uh, too. And yeah. um, because she uh, would have had, well, it was undiagnosed, but post-abortion syndrome, because I was seven years younger than the last lot of twins. Oh, wow. So it was more a, a lonely sort of uh, trek and, um, so she was um, not able to f face me a lot, so she would have me out of sight, out of mind. Um. Yeah, I imagine that would have been very hard. So Sue, you were telling me before that when you were 12, you actually met Dr Love. Yes, we uh, went for a trip back to West Australia and she, uh, he was very good to her. He had delivered her second set of twins, and yeah. um, so uh, she wanted to see him and show him me. Um, and uh, so he said, "So you're the young lady I nearly cut up." So, oh. <laughs> so from oh that goodness. point, from loving Doctor Love, I actually wanted to run away from him, yeah. and um, and I felt the reign of terror. So as you got older, I imagine that there was a lot of emotions and big feelings that you had to deal with on your own. So you said before that you felt quite alone. How did you get to a place when you started to find healing? It's uh, probably not until I was into my 30s and I was a Christian. Uh, I'd been saved probably about 15 years and uh, Actually, um, it came up at um, 
here in Adelaide, the showgrounds, uh, there was a big um, gathering, um, a, a charismatic convention that was on and uh, was right at the time they were introducing the abortion bill. At the charismatic convention, uh, they were wanting to pray into the abortion bill that was being introduced. They invited anyone that had, had um, survived abortion wow. up onto the stage. Was there many of you that went up on the stage? There were about, I would guess, uh, looking back all those years, th about 30 people I would... Goodness! And I couldn't get to this representation of the bill that, that had been copied. Yeah. I couldn't, and so I waited till a piece of it was handed to me. Wow. So, I mean, I couldn't get near it. So mm. there were so many people there. Yeah. So, um, and then again, those emotions arose in me at that time. Yeah. Yeah, of um, pain and anguish. Yeah. So when anyone wanted to be my friend, I would start pushing them away. I would start ambushing it. I heard uh, mm. a, a sabotage. Um, the relationships very early on. I had a lot of healing for that and it was straight after that that um, I had that uh, confidence. The confidence came that I could actually go develop friendships and, wow. and that afterwards. So. Yeah. So you mentioned healing. So what mm -hmm. does your healing, I'm imagining it's, it's a lifelong journey of mm -hmm. healing. But when you're talking about a specific incident, is that through your relationship with God and through that mm. pastor? Yeah. Well, there are a few um, pastors, a few people that, that contributed uh, at different times over a few years. So he hears the cry uh, of your heart and he responds. And it's just the right time every time. It certainly so. does. So, so there would be lots of people out there watching Living Proof at the moment that would be journeying through themselves a level of grief and fear and loss and, and well, really fear is such an overwhelming emotion. Mm -hmm. What advice do you have to those people? I know you're still walking through your healing journey as we are, all of us, but what advice would you give to someone who's at the beginning of their walk to find healing? I really have a passion for people. I see fear in people. I just see it, yeah. I see fear, oh, oh, and it breaks my heart. For me, it was making a decision um, that I was, I was so angry when I realised that fear controlled me mm. and I decided I was never going to be controlled by it. Yes, you can't stop feel, feeling a measure of fear, but when it controls your whole life, mm. I resented it and um, it controlled my relationships, it controlled my work, it, it controlled mm. what I did, what I didn't do, and it had me boxed in. Yeah. And I was determined that that wasn't gonna be the case because I wanted to be a woman of faith, uh, a woman of God, and with God, as God's love, there's no fear. And I wanted to walk in love, and I wanted to walk in confidence, I wanted to walk in freedom and to have peace in my heart. And um, so my, uh, so firstly, uh, that was a determination when I was about uh, 22, it was a vow, a personal vow. And then secondly, God unfolded healing and ministry through pastors and where the presence of God was. Sometimes it would be an intimate private thing with just the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Other times, um, it was a personal ministry, one-on-one, -on -one, uh, with uh, various pastors, um, lady pastors. And um, uh, the other thing was regular Bible readings, just reading through the Bible. And the Bible brings the peace of God, the understanding of our current world, the understanding of all ages and all situations and pain. And, um, and trauma and everything. And it gives us the understanding of God's love in it and God's healing in it, God's ministry and uh, just the love of Jesus. Yeah, yeah. how beautiful. So um, to go on, I'll just say um, uh, over the years since then, it's 
always, um, for some reason, I'm just drawn to people who have struggled with fear. Yeah. And um, my heart's gone out to them. I haven't always rationalised it at times, but then I find that, you know, I'm feeling their pain, I'm feeling their fear, mm. and I've done time with them. Um, and um, and uh, just uh, wanted to be there so they weren't alone in their fear. But I know that, uh, come to realise that's not enough. You, you can't just be with somebody through everything while they're still in their cave. And um, my heart's desire is to see people come out and enjoy the fullness of life. Sue, so would you mind praying for all of us out there that are walking through a season of fear where it just is relentless and it's not shifting? I'd love to, I really would. Heavenly Father, we just thank you that we can come to you with everything. We can come to you with our heart and with our mind and with our lives. And Lord, we can put on the altar and surrender to you all the things that we're gripping in our hands and we can lay them down at the foot of the cross. We can lay them down on your altar, Lord, and we can trust you with them. And Lord, we can surrender. We declare I, today, Lord, that we will let go of the things that hold us back from wholeness of love, from a healing, from the peace of God. And Lord God, I just pray for a mighty outpouring of your Holy Spirit on everyone listening. I just pray, Lord, that you will touch every heart, that you will heal, begin the process of healing, Lord God, that they might turn their hearts to you, Lord, and ask you to be with them. Let your presence be with them, Lord, all the days of their lives, Lord that you are with them. There is no need to fear, Lord. And we, Lord, I, do, I just pray, I just declare the blood of Jesus is enough to break all covenants of the enemy over lives, covenants of fear of death and sickness. And I just declare uh, that superior covenant to all other covenants in Jesus' name. So thank you, Sue. It's my pleasure, Sarah. Thank you for having me. Join us next time on Living Proof.